are in Singapore and we're off to find, yet again, more food. Right off the bat, we're going to the very cheapest Michelin starred restaurant in the entire world. Cool. So the thing to order here is the soya sauce, chicken rice. Are you gonna sit for that? You sit for our number to come. Thank you. I'm excited. This is an aloe vera jelly that we got because we like trying weird stuff. Um, <laughs> it's like a dessert. And then we also got, I got a, a chicken rice, which is like the famous Michelin star thing, and Jacob got the chicken. And what else? Oh, and fried dumplings. We're at Lao Fan Hawker Chan, which is the cheapest Michelin starred restaurant in the world um, here in Singapore. It started out as just a little food stall, like basically just street food in a big food court. And apparently, I read in an article that the the chef or the owner of the restaurant didn't even know like what a Michelin star really was and they he just like was randomly awarded a Michelin star and it did crazy things for his business as you can imagine. There are 44 Michelin starred restaurants which is crazy. Um, it'd be fun if we were going to visit all of them. We're not. <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm gonna practice the camera. <laughs> yeah. I used to be so bad at using chopsticks. Now I'm just kind of bad. So, let me tell you what the heck even is a Michelin star for those that don't know, because I didn't even know until like two years ago. The only Michelin thing I knew about was the tire company. So Michelin, the big fluffy white tire mascot guy. That's the same as the restaurant guide. So it's a French tire company that has this big list of restaurants all around the world that are qualified for some reason or another to be a good restaurant. So you can have one, two, or three Michelin stars. Three is the best. So a lot of the best restaurants in the world are Michelin starred. So I thought that it was, it was really yummy. It was a good meal, a solid lunch, worth the money for sure. But honestly, I don't think that it was like a super memorable or like really, I don't know, like really exciting meal. Um, Jacob and I have eaten at two other affordable um, Chinese Michelin starred restaurants. We've been to Tim Ho Wan in Hong Kong and Din Tai Fung in Taiwan. And both of those, I just feel like were a little bit more special and um, yeah, just more memorable. But if you're in Singapore, definitely try it out. It's fun to eat at a Michelin starred restaurant without, you know, hurting your wallet. Uh, but I don't know if I'd eat there again. So exercise parks are gaining some popularity in the US, but in Asia, they've been a thing for a long time. And anywhere you go, you can find goofy little exercise parks to do things like the body twist. <laughs> or the log lift. <laughs> All right. Here are some fun facts about Singapore that we've learned. Number one, gum is practically illegal in Singapore. You can't buy gum anywhere and you can't bring over a certain amount into the country and that is why all the sidewalks are a lot cleaner. It's funny I distinctly remember a time in elementary school when I heard like we're talking about silly laws in other countries and hearing that gum was illegal and being like what? That's crazy but it's just it's just life. Singapore also has really good education. I know that when it comes to kids in elementary through high school, um, they score really, really well on standardized testing, and um, they're often they've often been ranked first in the world. Okay, another fun fact: um, in Singapore, they drive on the left-hand side of the road, uh, just like in England, Australia, and Hong Kong. 
um, and we've almost gotten used to it. Like living in England for the last three months and then now traveling through Australia and here, it almost feels normal, but not quite. <laughs> that Singapore is also really small. It's only 42 kilometers across. So it only takes like 30 minutes to an hour to drive across the entire country. You could walk across its entirety in a day. A long day, but a day. <laughs> also, there are four national languages of Singapore. Um, they are Mandarin Chinese, English, Malay, and Tamil. I just knew that, of course. Just look at my phone. <laughs> I'm just smart, okay? We haven't been here for very long, but so far, we have it's been really easy to get around just knowing English. Um, just about everybody's spoken English, which is more than we can say for some other places we've traveled to in Asia. Um, mainland China can be a little tricky, but if you only know English and you're trying to travel to Singapore, it should be fine. We're no experts on Singapore, but lastly, we know that it's pretty known for its shopping, its cool architecture, and uh, food. Just a lot of food. Oh, also, Crazy Rich Asians takes place in Singapore, so now you know. Even though you probably already did. <laughs> Singapore has the highest percentage of millionaires in the world. One out of six, right? Yeah, has a million dollars in disposable wealth. So that doesn't even include like properties, businesses, or cars. Just money. Oh. Here is the most famous, the very most famous, hotel in all of Southeast Asia. Whoa. I think my thing is literally still beeping. That's good. How's the Should be a thing everywhere. Goodness. How are you feeling in Singapore? Poor. Poor. <laughs> but it's so cool. And it's not that everything's expensive. It's, it's just, just there are just some really nice things, and you just like get the feeling that like sure you can afford to do things a certain way, but you could also afford to do things like crazy over the top. It's just like such a fancy place. I mean, look at look at this. This gardens. These crazy trees, freaking cruise ships over there. This wild hotel. This is just nuts. These gardens are way cool. sleepy so we gotta take a break at our hotel and uh, more to come tomorrow oh and tonight we got in our little nap it, now was, it was a bit of a big nap <laughs> we got in our big nap <laughs> and now it's time for the evening is it like here or more this way and uh, now we're headed back to the park because those weird trees you saw light up at night all right come on Oh, okay. It's 
to get me ready. <laughs> yeah. Woke me up a little. <laughs> show at Gardens by the Bay. It was super cool. We were not expecting a whole lot. Oh, now it's completely dark. Um, but it was amazing. It felt so magical to like walk through the grove of all of these super trees and just hear the music and see the lights. Highly recommend. And it's free. Highly recommend visiting Singapore during the day and during the night. Such a different feel. It is our second and final day here. The short stay in Singapore. Today we're going to do a little bit of the same stuff. Eat at some Michelin star restaurants, see some cool gardens, and uh, that's it. Anything to say? Um, we'll also be checking out the airport. Um, Singapore is known for having a really cool airport. We didn't exactly see that when we landed, um, but hopefully it will show off for us when we're departing instead of arriving. So there's always a line, one, because it's super popular ever since being given a Michelin star, but two, because the chef himself prepares each dish. The food! This is a meatball. Yeah, meatball. I'm not sure about what that is. This is like fish something. Like, a little piece I don't of know. dried fish. A little piece of dried fish. Um, pork, most of it's pork. The base is pork. This is minced pork. Um, we've got dumplings. That wasn't a good dumpling Which are piece. good. They're good? Yeah. Nice. Dumplings, and I think this is liver or tongue or something like that. Yeah, liver, I think. So, yum. So this but, yeah. is the dry one? Uh-huh. The wet one. They all cost, they cost the same. Um, you can get a small, regular, or a large. We got a regular. It seems like plenty of food. Um, yeah. And we're in the very original location. He hasn't moved. He's had a Michelin star every year the last four or five years. And he still just does almost everything by himself, which is why the line is just super slow. You'll definitely stand in line for over 30 minutes, even if there's only like 10 people ahead of you. We are back in the same place which that is we not keep our going. Hotel. This is still not our hotel, uh, but we still want to go there. Today, we're headed to those things. Eddie. We went big and we bought tickets to all of the garden things. <laughs> <laughs> the flower fantasy and the two domes. The cloud dome and the no, the cloud 
garden and the flower dome. Yeah? I think. I don't remember. This place is sweet. Check out these jellyfish flowers. We got the flower spheres coming up and down over here. And of course, poinsettias. Emma, the cutest flower here. This, the giant ball of orchids. And just completely awesomeness. Now we're fancy so we get a shuttle service. Yeah, okay. Garden, what is it? Flower fantasy? Yeah, the flower fantasy. Scale um, of one to ten? Seven? I don't know. It was really cool. If it had been free, like, I'd be all for it. But I just don't think it was worth $20. Okay, review of the flower dome. Really cool. I think a much better use of money than the other one. Uh, yeah, we spent like three times the amount of time. Way cooler, honestly. Uh, huge. Worth it. Now, for the most anticipated garden experience the cloud for us. Misting time. The lost world. If you can't find us, there's no hope. We are leaving the gardens by the bay, and I think that it was a great time. We ended up going there three separate times, but I totally don't regret it. Um, we went first just to kind of like get a feel for what it was and then to see the, uh, the super dome. trees and then today we went and saw the floral fantasy exhibit, the flower dome and the uh, cloud forest. And of the three of those, I think my favorite was the cloud forest. What was yours? Same? Same. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Um, but it's cool that the cloud forest and the flower dome are both included in the same ticket but we would not recommend paying extra for the floral fantasy um yeah no good i do think that my favorite picture that i got was from there so that's something but yeah not worth the extra like 15 bucks or so our trip is coming to an end sadly we have to go back to winter weather it's really sad 
But one last tiny little bit of exploration. We'll show you the Singapore airport. Not everything in it, because we're tired and we already saw lots of cool stuff today. But basically this airport is awesome. It has an indoor pool. It has a hotel inside of it. It has the world's largest indoor waterfall. It's crazy stuff. Just a cozy little cactus garden. <sighs> we'll go one more garden probably and uh, Emma can show you around that one. Here's the cactus garden. It's late, it's dark, but it's nice. And it's outside. The attention to detail here is just incredible. Like, I think every square foot is accounted for, at least where we've been in Singapore. Whether that's a little bit of grass growing, or a bush that's been trimmed, or garbage that's been picked up. It's just, it's awesome. Emma. So I came out here to the airport pool. I think maybe I was supposed to pay to be here. I don't know for sure. I saw a sign that said pool package, so maybe. But I made it all the way up here and if I was in my swimsuit, I'd just be able to go swimming, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we are signing off. The next time you see us, we're gonna be a lot colder than we are right now. Yes. Sadly. Thank you for watching this probably very long Singapore video. If you made it this far, you may as well subscribe because you're crazy. We'll see you later. Ciao.